How do I look in these 3D glasses? Good? Good. What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. There's no denying it. 3D is the next big thing in mobile. We saw the Evo 3D at CTIA, and then we saw a couple of devices like the Optimus Pad and the Optimus 3D, both designed by LG, both shown off at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and coming to the States under a different name. One of those, the Optimus Pad, coming to the States as the T-Mobile G Slate, which is what you're seeing right here. Super cool device, one gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, stereoscopic five megapixel cameras on the back so you can shoot your own 3D content. 8.9 inch display, so it's a little bit smaller than the iPad, a little bit smaller than the Motorola Zoom, but a little bit bigger than the Galaxy Tab, or at least the original Galaxy Tab, so you can use it for maximum pocketability, easier to carry around, easier to put in the briefcase, things like that. Android 3.0, two megapixel front facing camera, and it's the first device to sport T-Mobile's new HSPA Plus 42 megabits per second connectivity, which is available in Orlando, New York, and Las Vegas right now with more markets to come by the end of the year. So it's an awesome device, it's super fast, and it's gonna be available for $529.99 full retail. Is this the device to get? Should you go with the Zoom? Should you go with the iPad? Which one should you go with? We're gonna find out in Phone Dog's review of the T-Mobile G Slate, it starts right now. So here it is, the T-Mobile G Slate. T-Mobile's first on a couple of different fronts. It's the first uh, tablet that support 42 megabits per second HSPA Plus, so you get those super fast network connection speeds if you're in an area that supports it. Second, it's the first tablet to have Android 3.0 Honeycomb. The Streak 7 only had Android 2.2. And third, it's the first tablet on T-Mobile's network to support 3D content, both the ability to publish your own with the stereoscopic five megapixel cameras on the back and the ability to view as well on the tablet. Now you can shoot 720p yeah, 3D videos on this device and then you can record on a typical, you know, just typical HD video, you could record 1080p HD video. So a lot of different recording capabilities here, a lot of different media capabilities on a device that uh, is pretty slim and pocketable as well. So let's talk about the uh, specs a little bit. One gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, very, very, very fast. And uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see this. I'm trying to keep it out of the light uh, as much as possible so there's no glare. On the bottom, you get your HDMI port, micro USB charging port. Over here on the side, speaker grills. Over here on the side, speaker as well. And then some, uh, looks 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Your power button over here. And then on the top, you get your volume rocker. And then your stereoscopic display, or stereoscopic scammers on the back. And then you, this is not, just so you know, this is not a kickstand. I don't know why they put that there. It's just a little metal piece, it says, with Google. So here's an idea of what the tablet looks like. It's very small. It's very pocketable in comparison to something like the Zoom, which, while it's nice, it is a much bigger tablet. So you can see, you know, very pocketable, very easy to carry around. And overall, you know, it has a nice size to it. It feels good in the hand. Now, since we didn't do an unboxing video, because this has been under embargo for a couple of days, here's what you get in the box. You get, of course, the 3D glasses, which I was wearing in the intro video, get those in the box. This is not, uh, it doesn't have a stereoscopic display, so you do have to wear the 3D glasses when you want to view the content. And then here you get your uh, your AC adapter, and you get a USB cable, and then you get a conversion cable, let's see here. Okay, from USB to, uh, to the bigger USB. So, and then here's what the box looks like. So you can see, let me turn it over here, I can't turn it over without spilling everything out, but you see, Google Apps, that's what it looks like on the back, and it's coming for $529.99, and the tablet has 32 gigabytes of onboard memory. So like I said, stereoscopic five megapixel cameras, it has a two megapixel camera on the front, so you get a nice little front-facing camera for when you wanna do video calling as well. But the 3D possibilities, pretty cool. Not quite sure if it'll take off just yet, but it's one of a slew of devices that are coming in the next few weeks, and the next few months, uh, that support 3D content at least. So overall, it just retains that clean, feel, which you can see here, clean look and feel, and you have the ability to touch to configure, you know, you can add your widgets, your app shortcuts, your wallpapers, and more, just like you could uh, on other Honeycomb tablets like the Motorola Zoom. No real changes there, and you can see, I'm sorry again for the glare, you know, these things are kind of hard to show on camera because tremendous glare, so you can see me and see me in the, uh, me in the camera in the background the entire time, but let's see what comes pre-installed on this device. You get 3D camcorder, 3D player, so you can view your 3D content with those glasses. You get Google Books, of course. You get uh, your clock, you get contacts, and you can see these typical Google things. You can see some slight differences in the way the icons look, but otherwise, uh, pretty similar to what you've seen, not only in past versions of Android for tablets, but also on phones as well. So strictly, what comes on this device that doesn't come on others, the 3D stuff, EA games, T-Mobile's GetWeb now, 
uh, Need for Speed Shift, T-Mobile TV, and then T-Mobile My Account, and My Device. Now, like I said, this thing supports T-Mobile's 42 megabits per second HSPA Plus uh, connectivity. Now, this is a 21 megabits per second market, so this is still a 4G market. I'm in Charlotte, and this is still a 4G market, but you can see the, uh, and you can see the 4G connectivity there along with the 54% battery meter. So for those that haven't seen my Motorola Zoom video, let's take a look at some of the differences that are in Android 3.0 versus some of the things, you know, that were on Android 2.2 and how it's changed to be more tablet friendly. First, my favorite, the browser. Totally, totally different here on the browser. And you can see Congress passes budget five times the women, men avoid. Uh, let's see. We'll go to uh, phone dog, for example. First of all, you'll notice that the browser Totally refined, looks just like Chrome browser on the desktop. You can use it in portrait or in landscape, and I, I don't want to zoom out or else I'll have a hard time showing it to you when we're standing in landscape mode here. But it uh, looks just like Chrome with the tabs at the top, easy to use in portrait and landscape, looks just kind of like a desktop browser, if you will. So let's go to phonetalk.com, wait for that to load. And I love how this one feels in the hand. It has a nice feel to it. It's not too big like the, uh, the Motorola Zoom may be for some people but it's also not too small, which is nice. Let's turn that light away, so hopefully I'll reduce some of the glare. And you can see here's Phone Dog, and uh, you know, let's open up a second tab, for example, and it goes to Google, and let's say we wanna go back to Phone Dog, we click on that tab, and we come down here and we can zoom in, zoom out, pinch to zoom, just like on the Motorola Zoom, pinch to zoom very quick with little to no lag. I would say it's a little bit slower, perhaps on this one, which you can see kind of, I don't know why the flash Flash ads like migrating over to where it belongs on the side of the page. Let's see here. Close that one. So let's scroll up and down. You can see pinch to zoom. Pretty responsive, but kind of erratic as well. Like, let me see if I can do it better in portrait mode. Let's see. But overall, I mean, just the size is fantastic. Much easier to hold in the hand. Feels more like a book as opposed to some big, you know, slab like the uh, the Motorola Zoom. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking it. I like that device a lot, but I do like the size much better. It's a nice balance between 7 inches being too small and 10.1 being too large. But you can see looks great. Text zoomed all the way in, easy to read, and then even when zoomed all the way out, easy to read as well. But I just like the capabilities of the browser on, uh, in Honeycomb as opposed to the browser on Android 2.2 because it was never optimized for tablets, so not uh, you know a little bit harder to use on a, on a larger display, like a 7-inch display or an 8.9-inch display. Now down here you see these buttons. This one right here gives you the ability to see what's open. So we have Google Search, Settings, Clock, and Gmail all opened at the moment. So we can go back from there. This one returns me to the home screen, and then this one takes me back to whatever page I was on before, which I think was CNN. So I'm back out of that, and then I can go to Google and search for anything. But let's say I want to go home. I click on that. I have my apps up here. I can click the plus button to add my widgets, app shortcuts, wallpapers, and more. And this is more Honeycomb specific stuff, not, not G Slate specific stuff. But you can see Google up here and voice activated services up there. So I can Google, you know, phone dog. Let's see here. Let's Google Aaron Baker. And probably the wrestler guy is going to come up. But you get the idea of, uh, yeah, the wrestler guy's gonna come up. That's me right there. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, you can see, quick, easy, you know, the, the HSPA Plus is working very, very, very well, even though this is 21 megabits per second market. But the browser happens to be one of my favorite applications on this device. And then you can see stuff like contacts. When we jump into contacts here, it's optimized for the tablet display. You can see the names over here. You can see customer support. Let's wait, for, let's flip it around here. You can see it there and then there as well. So, optimized for tablet, you have this column over here with the names, and then you have the, uh, the specifications over here, and then we can click the pencil to edit. We can add whatever we want to add it. We can say another home phone. We can add another field. Let's do an address, for example. We can add an address, bring that up, and then click done, and it brings it right back over. So again, you know, nothing, hu nothing hugely different from Android 2.2 or even the phone versions of Android, but still just optimized for a tablet. Now you see that on a couple of different programs. You see that on contacts. You also see that in things like calendar as well, where it's optimized for the tablet. I'm sorry, it is a little bit, the background on this is a little bit light, so it may be hard to see. Let me try to get it zoomed in for you so you can see. Let's see here. For example, let's add a new 
appointment here. And then we can click on event name, whatever. I'm just going to fill something in just so you get an idea of what it looks like Thursday, April 14th. So we'll just say done just so you can see what it looks like on the calendar. So there it is. And uh, you know, calendar very similar to what you've seen now. Here's month format. And then we can switch to day if we wanted to, but you can see it's over there on the 14th from 6 to 7 p.m. So a lot of these applications, like I said, you know, come over from the older versions of Android, but still optimized for use on this big tablet display. One other application that's obviously optimized for the screen and one that's done a really good job with taking advantage of it is the Android market. You'll see here we have uh, eBooks, or, or books I should say for Google eBooks, and then we have Android apps for the, uh, for the actual device itself. So let's go in here, you can see categories, featured tablet apps, top free apps, best-selling apps. So just optimized for the screen, you can use it as, as always, portrait and in landscape mode. Let's wait for it to load over into landscape mode. Actually, I take that back, I guess you can't use it in landscape mode. I thought you could, but I guess I guess not, at least not on this device. So let's take a look here. For example, we can search our market always up here in the top right-hand corner. So let's search for Twitter, hit enter, let it load up. Let's see here, Twitter free, and then we'll install that. And we'll hit OK. So we can watch that download. Now you'll notice over here, notifications have been moved to the uh, to the right side down here. So you can see installing down here. It'll give you the, the progress of the installation. It'll say Twitter successfully installed. So all the notifications will pop up down here with separate X's and separate areas. So we can click X, X that we've resolved those. And now we know that Twitter is installed on the device. So let's go back to the actual uh, store though. This gives you an idea of what it looks like. You can see the uh, the marketing here, the logo the description, what's new, screenshots, videos, reviews, uh, developer information, and related applications. So very similar, I mean, not too different from what you would see on the phone side, but just optimized, like I said, for that big display. So you have your Android apps here. Scroll up and down and take a look at those. And then we can go back, and we can go to books if we want to. Click on that, we can search for specific books. So I happen to be a fan of John Grisham, so I'm going to type in Grisham. and see what loads up there. Okay, so we've got a couple of different, like a painted house, for example. Description, reviews of the book, and I can actually buy it right there. Then I have a free sample if I want to download the free sample. So I can go to Google Books, and it's actually going to load up in Google Books for me. We can uh, wait for that to load. Yep, there it goes. Okay, painted house, John Grisham. So there we go, painted house. We can open up the page. Yep, bam. Let's just get a look at what it looks like. There we go, perfect. So there's chapter one. You can see the two-page layout here, or you should be able to use it in portrait. That's what I thought, portrait, and then see the elongated version. Chapter one there, and I can just scroll from side to side like that.